Good afternoon, everyone. It's Peter here. I'm usually from the Royal Institution, but at the moment, like a lot of you, um, coming live from my flat in London. And because I'm socially isolating, basically, I've just been playing a lot of video games. Um, and that got me thinking, could I use video games to explain some scientific concepts? Well, to see whether we can or not, let's transport ourselves to the legendary kingdom of Hyrule for a game that I'm going to be calling The Legend of Newton, Laws of Motion. Newton's three laws of motion are the foundation of classical mechanics, and it's fairly easy to find examples of all three of them whilst playing through The Legend of Zelda. So the first law states that an object either remains at rest or continues to move at a constant velocity unless acted upon by a force. The first way to think of this is that objects will stay stationary unless acted on a force. So me and this bomb will both stay stationary unless acted on by a force, such as an explosion. Conversely, objects that are in motion will stay in motion unless acted on by a force. So if you suddenly find yourself falling, you'll continue to fall until the ground stops you. Newton's second law is a little bit more complicated, and it states that acceleration of an object increases if the resultant force on it increases, and decreases if the mass of the object increases. One way of thinking about this is that heavier objects require more force to move them. So this small boulder, I can push it around quite easily. This medium-sized boulder is going to take a fair bit more force to move, but I can just about push it. Whereas this large boulder over here, try as I might, it just isn't going to budge. Another way to think of this is that more force equals more acceleration um, with the same sized object. And it's almost as if Zelda wants to be a physics simulator because in this game there's a feature where you can lock an object, hit it a number of times, and then the object releases. So basically the more times you hit it, the more force you load into it. So with this first boulder, I'm just going to hit it once and release it. And so we can see with one hit of force, it moves far, but not very far. Whereas with the second boulder, if I hit it five times, I've loaded in much more force, and so the acceleration is much greater. Now Newton's third law is perhaps the one we know the most, and that is that every action has an equal and opposite action. Now a really simple way of showing this um, is with my archery. So if I'm firing arrows on the wall, they bounce back off the wall. The arrow pushes into the wall and the wall pushes back at the arrow and it bounces off the wall and hits onto the floor. But that wasn't the most exciting way to demonstrate Newton's third law. So let's hop onto this mining cart and I've got another bomb that we saw at the beginning. I'm going to load it into the back and when I detonate this bomb, Air is forced out the back of the cart by the explosion, propelling the cart forward. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Thank you all for watching this. I hope you enjoyed it and enjoy watching the rest of the Global Science Show.